Last year, as you probably remember, the Trump White House manufactured this huge fake controversy over Michelle Wolf's performance at the Correspondents' Dinner. This year, the White House Correspondents' Association says, forget it, no more comedian. Here's why that's a big mistake. Bob Hope did the White House Correspondents' Dinner. George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Paula Poundstone, Wanda Sykes. We have had a comedian at the White House Correspondents' Dinner for decades straight. And I will tell you, as a former presidential staffer, no White House likes being made fun of. Every year, people made fun of Obama. You know, even us at SNL got criticized this year for making fun of ISIS. Now, I think that's unfair. I mean, if anyone is guilty of taking ISIS too lightly, it's them. Um, you know. <laughs> they made fun of healthcare.gov. It was bad. Look, I, I don't even have an analogy because the website is now the thing people use to describe other bad things. <laughs> They say stuff like, ugh, I shouldn't have eaten that sushi. I was up all night, healthcare.gov. They said he was disappointing. <laughs> Mr. President, you remember, you remember when the country rallied around you in hopes of a better tomorrow? That was hilarious. <laughs> Joel McHale made fun of Nancy Pelosi's face. And I'm not going to spoil the shocking twist on House of Cards, but just know that it was so surprising that Nancy Pelosi's face almost changed expression. <laughs> Did you like that one, Nancy? I can't tell. I cringed a little bit, but we never manufactured a bunch of outrage for no reason. Because it's just a joke. What's the big deal? If you have such a thin skin, you should not be in politics in the first place. And more important, there is something fundamentally democratic about having someone stand up in front of the leader of the free world and make fun of them a little bit. Think about what the White House said when they tried to pull Jim Acosta's press pass from the briefing room. The word they used was decorum. This is a White House that is obsessed with gestures of respect. And so the Correspondents Association, in a weird way, is a celebration of disrespect. For one night only, we are reminding everyone that, yeah, you can make fun of powerful people to their face in a democracy, and you don't have to apologize for that. It's a reminder that in a democracy, we don't just talk about free speech, we exercise free speech. Can you imagine this happening in Putin's Russia, or in Saudi Arabia, or in China? Of course not, but it happens in America, and it's kind of special, even when it crosses the line a tiny bit. This year, the headliner, instead of a comedian, is going to be historian Ron Chernow. Now, this is Ron Chernow's latest book. This is le legitimately fascinating. Uh, not funny at all. Like, maybe he has, you know, a tight five on the Battle of uh, Cold Harbor, but I doubt it. I don't know the message the Correspondents Association was hoping to send, but I do know the message they sent. The message is, if you manufacture a fake controversy, some of your attacks on freedom of speech and, by association, freedom of the press will succeed. Yes, this is just a comedy show, but the reason that I care about this is because if the press changes its behavior or is perceived to change its behavior due to manufactured controversies, you're going to see more manufactured controversies. We already saw the 2016 election dominated by Hillary Clinton's email scandal. This is the biggest political scandal since Watergate. We saw the 2018 campaign have all of these stories about the, the supposed threat of a migrant caravan. The Democrats want to invite caravan after caravan of illegal aliens to flood into your community. In 2020, we're gonna see more of this stuff unless the press starts to make it clear that they will not be swayed by it. The writer George Orwell once said, okay, I'm not the kind of person who remembers these things, but I will read it from my phone. He said, if liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. And that's part of the free expression, the free speech, that's right there next to a free press in the First Amendment. So a dinner that celebrates a First Amendment ought to celebrate free speech as well. Immigrant who was brought here by his parents and didn't do anything.